Oh, wow. Hey, guys, remember that app I was talking about on my website called File Browser about two months ago back in May? I was kind of complaining because the project kind of went dead and nobody was working on it anymore. And I was like, man, this is such an awesome piece of software. And nobody's working on it. That has changed. We're going to take a look at the update. We're going to install it. And I'm going to show you what it looks like on your mobile devices. Woo, today's a good day. Uh, I actually found out about this uh, probably a couple weeks ago. Um, it's kind of funny because I, was, I wrote an article on my website about how I wish somebody would pick up this project. And lo and behold, here we are today on GitHub with new commits and new developers working on file browsers. So this is great. There, there's not a whole lot of changes in the new updates. Um, they removed a couple things that I think were kind of cluttering it up a little bit and some things I wasn't really using it anyways, like uh, some creating torrent files and there was probably a couple other things and they added a dark option or a dark mode, which you can see magically right here. I just loaded this up for you. It's an example instance I have uh, installed on my Synology NAS and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, but I thought I would do an overview first really quick. This is it, a really basic interface. Um, I actually have the console opened up and I wasn't even using it, but it says right here on the left side, let's go over this really quick. It says file browser 2.4.0. Now I'm not sure why, but the older versions were like 2.9 point something. So I'm not sure what's going on with the, but the release numbers, but it is kind of weird how they work right now. Um, but things have been cleaned up. There have been some torrent things that were up here that were taken out, which I never used anyways. And it's been simplified and it looks good. It also looks really good on a mobile device. It works kind of just like it does uh, on a regular computer where you have to double click to go into a directory. I put some music in here that was uh, given away free on the data hoarder subreddit. And the guy put it out there and said, if you guys want to use it, feel free. And it is here. You can stream the music uh, in the folders just like you could live anywhere else. The only thing that you can't do right now is you can't stream video live. So for example, if I go into my photos directory where I have this video here, you can only download. But on, on, on mobile devices, it works really good to where you can actually click download and it plays right away. But on the PC, if I was to click download here, um, I would have to just click open with movies and TV. So. <laughs> and the poor girl, bless her heart, she's cutting a lot of teeth right now. But uh, that's it right there. You have a... Um, grid and list view. So you have a list and grid view, which is really nice. I have one selected here. So you can see that one is selected to download. So I can click download and it will download that file. I can also upload a file and I can add a folder, but you can do the same thing from here on the left side as well. Uh, you can't right click to remove things like you would on a standard file system on your desktop, but let's see this. You can press the delete on your keyboard and it will remove the folder. So. That's good to know. So this is a quick look at it. And now I wanna dive in and I wanna install it on the Synology NAS for you guys so you guys know how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is search for the image in the Docker registry. So we're gonna search for file browser, bring it up. And there's a few images in here and the one we want right now is the Herlenko. So this one right here, you'll double click it to download it and you wanna make sure that you have the latest tag. So I'll go ahead and select that. Then we'll go over to our images and since I already have it downloaded, I can just search for it here. It'd be H right here. And once it's done downloading, you just double click to launch it. And we'll just, I'll just leave it how it is. I just deleted the one to make it look a little bit better, but we will go into advanced settings, enable auto restart and the volumes are pretty simple. It just needs a data and a config folder. So what you need to do is go into, you can map these folders how you want to, but this is how I like to do it. So it says it's completed. Um, what I already did is I made a folder in here called file browser new. If you don't have that, you're gonna have to make that. And then inside of here, I wanna create a new folder called config. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then hit select and then map that to our config or mount it rather. And then for our data, this is where all of your data files are going to be, your photos, your music, your videos, whatever you want to um, mount your instance of file browser to. So that is where that can be. It can be anywhere, really. But I went ahead and separated it and put it in the same folder, I should say. I don't want to confuse you guys too much, but 
I went ahead and made the data folder and that is where the music and photo folders are. So it's gonna be actually the data folder, which is going to be all those subfolders, music, photos, whatever. So you get the point, I think. If you don't, let me know in the comments and I'll try to break it down a little bit easier for you guys, but it seems pretty simple. So I'll go to the root folder data within the file browser, new. I have, a, I have several different file browsers, but this is the one I'm making for this specific image. Container, and then hit select. And this is going to be data. That's pretty simple, piece of cake. And for our port settings, it wants you to, to uh, go ahead and put this on 8080, but obviously I'm using that port, so I will do 8024. Hopefully that's not being used. Everything else looks good. We will hit apply, and then we will hit next, and run this container after the wizard is finished is good. So let's go ahead and do that. By the way, if the port's already in use, it'll pop up right here and tell you that it's already being used. So it looks like the container is off to a good start. We can take a look at the logs really quick. And it, is, it says no config file used, but listening on 8080. I don't know if that means it's running, but let's check port 8024. Let's delete that and go to 8024. There it is. And the default login is admin, admin. Oops. And we're logged in. So here it is. That's how you install it. I mean, that took what? A whole 60 seconds to do that. Um, I mean, using Synology, it's easy because you just, all you have to do is search for the image and then just load it up and everything else does it for you. You don't have to have any, um, any compose files or change any coding or anything like that. Uh, in the settings, the first thing I like to do is go into global settings and change the theme from light to dark. So we'll do that. Then we'll go down to the bottom. Actually, just hit update pretty much anywhere and then refresh and you're in dark. So there's those two folders that were in my data folder. These are subfolders of the data folder and they are here and there they are. I mean, that was super easy, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like on a mobile device because I want you guys to see that this is a great mobile, remote mobile option if you want to put this behind a reverse proxy. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we are on the file browser mobile version. This is actually just, I went to open a Firefox tab and we're going to log in here using admin admin. Oh, why didn't that work? Make sure it's all case sensitive, by the way. I didn't change anything that I know of. So this should work. There it goes. But this is it. I mean, it looks really good. Um, it's in a compact, nice view here. We can see the menu here on the right side. We can switch to a more compact view. But I like, I like the bigger view. And you just double click like usual to go in. And we can check out the music on our phone. If we want to play a song, we can go ahead and do that as well. Hit play here. All right, very cool. Let's go back home and go into photos. You can see the thumbnails, which actually in the older versions, the thumbnails uh, were pretty much non-existent. You had to do some kind of weird, uh, you had to scan and do something weird to get the thumbnails to show up. So this is really good. The, the, the thumbnail feature is definitely great. So let's see here. Uh, we can double click to get a bigger view. There's me with my kiddos. And we can go back here and see the menu, you can go into the settings and pretty much everything you see on the desktop uh, web version is here on the mobile as well. But this is just to show you guys that it looks really good and it's definitely very, very usable on a mobile device. So that's the updated version of File Browser. I hope you guys like it. Very simple, great web interface, works good on the mobile, looks good on the mobile. Try it out yourself, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you're not using Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that when there's so many self-hosted solutions out there. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you found it helpful, leave me a thumbs up. Are you subscribed? Why not? Consider subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, leave me a comment in the comment section below and uh, I'll definitely get back to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I've got some other things I'm cooking up for you guys I think you're going to like. Some cool apps on the way. Stay tuned.